Hey guys, welcome back! In today's video, I'm going to be going through a recent Griffin commission that I had uh, received, and it's the first Griffin doll that I've made, so stay tuned. So first of all, I'm starting off with a resin cast of a phoenix head that I have made. And I originally sculpted it from monster clay, molded it in silicon, and then I can cast it in resin, and resin is a lot lighter than um, uh, any clay pieces. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding uh, some ears with epoxy sculpt to the resin piece because the commissioner wanted a uh, snow leopard type griffin. So I uh, sculpted the ears from a snow leopard out of this epoxy sculpt. So I usually just put the ears on and then uh, just work on the symmetry with uh, where the ears go and how it curves and stuff. So it can take some time but um, definitely worth it. Alright, so here's what we have and I usually just leave it to dry overnight just so it's nice and hard. So I'm going to be painting the eyes with this Halo Blue Gold by Lumiere Jacquard and uh, the commissioner wanted a nice green eye for it so um, here we have uh, the ears are all dry and I just put on a um, base coat of white just to make it all um, uniform and it's not weird grey ears sticking out of nowhere. So just loading up the brush with that Lumiere paint and putting it onto the eyeball as a first layer of paint. Alright, moving on to some black paint and I'm using a chrome acryl acrylic black paint and I'm going to be doing a black beak. And the commissioner wanted the griffin to have grey skin. So I got a fair few reference pictures uh, sent to me which do help me out a lot to uh, bring uh, the creature to life that you want. So um, if you ever do commission me, do send some reference photos because it does help. So just loading up the beak area, I was originally going to just do the tip of the beak as black and the mouth area but I decided to just go ahead and um, paint the whole beaky area black so that you're underneath the beak bit. So I know I usually say to paint light colours first and then move on to the darker colours but in this instance I wanted to do the black first because um, I wanted a crisp line between the skin and the beak. I'd been wanting to make a Gryffindor for a really long time um, but I just never got around to it so this commissioner was uh, the jump I needed to actually start making Gryffindors and everyone seemed to really like it so I'm uh, working on another one to be uh, put up for grabs in my Etsy shop. So I had the idea of doing the back of the years black but I ended up just doing it a plain white anyway so it's kind of a uh, useless process. And here's what we have so far. I'm just gonna let this dry and come back with the gray paint. So I'm using a neutral gray in uh, chrome acryl acrylic paints, uh, but you can use any gray you want. And I'm just doing the first layer of the skin, um, this gray color, but I end up doing a sort of ombre look uh, throughout the whole skin. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't have great coverage. So I put quite a few layers on this. Right, so starting with that ombre uh, grey and I've mixed up a really dark uh, sort of uh, gunmetal grey to begin with and then I'm just going to be blending it into that lighter grey uh, throughout the whole uh, face. I also wanted to uh, make the eye area a bit darker just so it brings out the colour of the eyes. And also adding some of that uh, grey ombre underneath the beak area. Okay, for the top of the head I was going for more of a light ombre look, so a white to a lighter grey. So I put down the grey first and then added a bunch of white to the back and just blended it in while the paint was still wet. So here is what we've got. 
So just adding the pupils to the eyeballs and I'm using that same dry brush effect uh, where I layer up the paint to make it a bit more, uh, give it a bit more depth. So um, I have said that I will do a separate video on this, so um, definitely look out for that. Just adding a dot of white to bring out the eyeballs and give it a little bit of character. And painting is done. Let it dry and move on. So I'm going to be painting up these um, phoenix feet that I had just sculpted and moulded. Um, these are a brand new part of my uh, Phoenix doll, so it would be great to use it with my Griffin dolls as well. So these little feet have the same deal as the head um, with black claws and uh, grey skin, but I did those little foot pads at the front and the top of the leg uh, a nice shimmery white. So here we have the claws all painted up first, and then uh, you can cut in a bit better when it's the claws are painted first. So using that same neutral grey as I did for the head and I've just squirted it on and just go from there. And as you can see I'm just avoiding painting that top of the uh, claws just because I wanted to keep it white to put that shimmery um, white paint on it. And it's easier to just keep things white if you want to paint it white than, uh, rather than painting over some things because it's just it's way too hard. So for this uh, Griffin doll, I kind of uh, had this idea of putting a white um, wash over the top of the greys just so it gives it a bit of depth and makes it look a bit older uh, and more claw-like because uh, if you look at a eagle claw, it's sort of got a um, white undertone to it. Uh, so I wanted to achieve that here. So I did a white wash over the top of the grey, um, which turned out really well. It looks a bit light in the... Um, video but it does dry a lot darker than what it actually looks like when it's wet so it seems to be a ongoing thing with grey paints is that they dry a lot darker than what they appear wet. So I'm using this uh, super sparkle paint uh, from Lumiere by Jacquard and that's going to be the sparkly um, tone on the top of the Phoenix Claws and it's, it's a really sparkly paint. <laughs> you would expect that with uh, the name Super Sparkle but um, yeah I really like this paint. Uh, it doesn't give much great coverage but it does good have a good sheen to it. Okay, so the rear end of this griffin is going to be a snow leopard, so I'm painting up some um, cat paws just for the rear end um, and then uh, just painting it up with my black acryl paint. So moving on to the fur, and this is the fur that I'm going to be using for the front end of the griffin. It's a nice thick white uh, short piled fur and you can see here I have drawn out the front half of the patterns of the griffin doll and for this one I actually just used my wolf pattern um, because it's roughly the same size and the same sort of stature and shape of the body so you can see here I'm cutting it out and I've added a bit too much to the legs so just snip it off and continue on and because the smaller head of the phoenix sculpt um, I made a smaller neck just so it doesn't look odd and um, off shape so um, something to keep in mind if you're reusing a pattern of yours. So this is the fur that I'm going to be using for the rear end, that snow leopard end. Uh, it's really nice fur, it's got a nice feel to it. Um, it is hard to work with um, because of the shorter pile but um, uh, as I'm not furring with this particular one it's great to work with because I don't have to chop it up or anything. So. Uh, just topping out the tail and the back end of the patterns and here's what it's going to look like when it's all sewn up and put together and I really like the way this one turned out. It had a good tone to it and um, all of the colours matched and everything it just worked. <laughs> Right, once we've cut the shapes out, I pin it up and run it through the sewing machine. And you can see here that I've made the neck quite thin, um, just to compensate for that smaller head. And I've joined the two different types of fur in the middle and has a white underbelly like a snow leopard. 
and now we have to turn it inside out. Alright, so here it is inside out um, and you can see uh, the legs of the white fur will need a bit of a trim once everything's put together. So I usually just create a armature out of uh, wire and then I'll attach the uh, resin pieces to the armature once it's inside the um, fur pieces. So the amateur uh, tutorials I'm kind of saving for either a future Patreon that I'm thinking about doing or even some paid tutorials in the future. So I'm just sewing up the leg pieces using a ladder stitch and then gluing it up with some of that tacky fabric glue that you've seen me use before. Right, so this particular commissioner wanted um, black tip feathers and I couldn't actually find any that were cruelty free or anything so I just bought, ended up buying uh, just white ones and painting them myself just so I could get that same uh, thing that the commissioner wanted. So I painted up roughly 30 to 40 feathers uh, with this black tip so I could um, complete the wings with this. So I was also saving the wing tutorial for something separate as well, so I'm not going to go through it in this video, but you can see here roughly what it looks like with the black tips. And I'm just going to give you a quick look of uh, what the head looks like after it's been attached with the fur. And you can see that um, how I put the ears as just white rather than the black that I painted before, uh, but I think it looks great like that. So here's what it looks like. So it was like a last minute decision to put the black spots on the chest of the griffin, but I thought it worked out really well and combined the spots on the back of the griffin to the front. What do you think? So stay tuned for that future griffin that I will have up for grabs, but uh, there's a lot of interest in it, so do be quick with it if you want to get it. that is it for me today guys i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any requests uh, leave it in the comments down below and i'll check them out you can also check me out on instagram and facebook at creatures of nat and i'll see you in the next one bye